Hey everybody, it's Mickey, and in today's video, I have the very best crock pot meal I have ever shared before. I have a Ray Dunn and grocery haul for you, and I have the start of our holiday planning. So if you are new here, I hope you will subscribe. I put out new videos every week about all things home. I just have time for a quick outfit of the day. I am super excited to be wearing boots and a scarf on this chilly morning. November is always the start of the holiday prep season and I am so happy to take you guys along with me as I start to plan for the holiday season. We are starting on dinner early. We're going to be getting the crock pot going. I have a really simple recipe for you for apple butter pork loin. And for this recipe, you are of course going to need some apple butter, a little bit of applesauce, some chopped onion, a few cloves of minced garlic, and a pork loin. This one is about three and a half pounds. It's from Smithfield. It's the one that I always choose. I've always had great luck with this. To get this started, we are going to be browning our pork loin in about a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter. We have it really well seasoned with salt, pepper, Mrs. Dash, and garlic powder. This recipe is so simple and so delicious. This is a meal that you can make any night of the week or you can make it for when company is coming over and it's really a perfect recipe for a casual holiday gathering. It is so good. Once the pork is browned on all sides, you're going to transfer it to your crock pot. On top, you're going to add a whole chopped onion, three or four minced cloves of garlic, one whole jar of apple butter, a small container of applesauce, and about one cup of water. I like to put the water inside of the jar and shake it up so you don't waste any of that delicious apple butter. So you're just going to cover, and I like to cook it for the first few hours on high, and then after that I will put it down to low and let it cook for another about two or three hours. I have a pretty tiny grocery haul to share with you today, but this time of year, whenever I go to the grocery store, even if I am just running in to pick out a few things, I always check what they have on sale because this is the time of year that I like to really stock my pantries. I was just running into the store for celery and onions and carrots and I came out with a few extra things. So I did get some of the um, Swanson vegetable broth. They had all the broths on sale today so I got myself four. I have an extra Hidden Valley Ranch salad dressing. My daughter pretty much puts this on everything. I have an extra um, wishbone Italian that I use for some pasta salads and things like that during the holidays. I have a couple of the Pace Picante sauces. I have a few extra crushed tomatoes. I'm going to take you guys down into my pantry downstairs and show you what I'm trying to build up so that I have, you know, like a little backup for all the cooking and the baking and things that, you know, pretty much start this month. So I have a bunch of tomato products down there already, but I always like to pick up a few when I'm at the store. I have a couple avocados here, some onions, celery, some carrots. My absolute favorite granola, this um, coconut and cashew butter granola is my favorite. I always put this on top of my oatmeal. I have a couple extra of the sweet baby rays, hickory and brown sugar barbecue sauce. This is also one of our absolute favorites. I got two big bags of the Nestle Toll House semi-sweet and the milk chocolate chips. They were on sale. I got some um, little grape tomatoes, just one little head of garlic, some parsley, and a couple of these Ziploc um, big containers. I'm going to be making soup later on in the week, and I like to freeze my soup in these kinds of containers. So that is just my little grocery haul for you today. Like I said, I'm going to take you down and show you my um, big pantry down in um, our storage room downstairs. It needs stocked, it's a little empty. So oftentimes you will hear me mention my downstairs pantry and it is this little room right at the bottom of my stairs in my basement that we have turned into a kitchen pantry. 
So this is where I store all of my larger appliances that don't fit up in my kitchen. I have like my Keurig, I have my crock pots down here, I have my food processor and roasting pans and things like that. These are all the things that I use, especially for the holidays, but I just do not have room for in my kitchen. I also have a big cabinet here that I devote to food storage. So as you can see, I have a bunch of containers in here, um, and this is where I store my canned goods and you know extra baking supplies and those kinds of things. So leading up to the holidays, and really just for you know the winter months themselves, I like to start stocking my pantry with things that I use on a regular basis so that I know I have what I need to make dinner for the family or to bake or just to have that ease of mind that should we get a blizzard, I am well stocked and will be fine. So what I like to do is like when I go to Costco or I go to the grocery store and I see things on special, I will buy a few extra to stick here in my pantry. Like I have, you know, my barbecue sauces, all of my um, tomato goods. I, I am an Italian cook and I use tomato products all the time. So down here I also have some picante sauce, some more tomato sauce. Down below in these containers I have a lot of baking goods pasta, raisins, and those kinds of things. So as you can see, I have some empty spaces here that I have been working on filling up. So each time I go to the grocery store, I am always looking for those deals and those things that I can add and put away in my pantry. This is also where I keep all of my extra spices that I use to refill my containers up in the kitchen. I have a double container here that I found at Target that works really well. A lot of these small containers are from the little Amish store that we go to frequently. And I also have containers up here to hold those, you know, like the soft-sided kinds of containers, like um, for chips, for granola, um, pancake mix, cake mix, and things like that. I like to keep them in a little bit of a stronger container just in case you get one of those little cute little unwelcomed guests that you can sometimes get, especially here out, out in Virginia in the winter months. So this is my downstairs pantry. So this is what I'm working on stocking. As you can see, I'm doing a pretty good job. I still have some space and some things that I have on my list to fill it up with. So by the time you see this video, it's going to be about November 1st. And for me, November 1st really does signify the beginning of the whole holiday season with Thanksgiving and Christmas on their way. And we have so much to do that for me, it really does calm my anxieties to start making lists. So I start out November by making a whole list of all of the little home projects and housekeeping things that I need to get done before the holidays are upon us. Now it may look like a lot of things on these two pages, but a lot of it are the monthly chores that I do anyway. It's just a checklist for me to make sure that I get everything done. So by the time, especially when Christmas rolls around, that everything is done and the house is ready for me to decorate. So some of the things that I have on my list that aren't considered, you know, your normal monthly cleaning routine would be um, in our kitchen. We are painting the kitchen and we're also painting the family room. I have on my list to make curtains for the kitchen. Um, the dining room I have here to um, reupholster the dining room chairs before the holidays begin. I also have um, a whole pantry and freezer clean out and stocking that I do before the holidays. So as I go along in the next couple days, mostly over the next two weeks, I will be checking off all these little things that I get done and it just helps calm the whole anxiety thing that you have before the holidays thinking that you have so much to do and so much to get done. So I am going to leave a link for you guys down below to my blog, mybashfullife.com. There I'm going to have these two lists that I have in my planner right there on my blog that you guys can take a look at 
and see if there are things on my list that you can also get done in your own home. I really do think making yourself a list does help clear your head of things that you have to get done. It just seems like so much when it's rolling around in your brain, but once you get it down on paper, you can really knock so many things out on this list very quickly. So I will leave a link to that blog post down below. It has been quite a while since I've been able to share with you guys a Ray Dunn haul. I hadn't been finding things for quite a while and then all of a sudden, you know, things started to trickle in a little bit. I was able to get some of my wish list pieces, so I wanted to share with you what I've collected, you know, over the last couple weeks. Now, today I went into Home Goods in hopes to finding the Marshmallow Cellar. That's the number one on my list that I would love to find. I did not find it today, but I was able to come across some of the red Christmas pieces. I don't have any of these in my collection, so I was super excited to find them. I found the, these two mugs, these two red mugs, uh, the Merry Christmas one and the Believe one, which I think if I don't find any other red pieces, I will be fine with these because I think these are perfect for Christmas. They'll look so cute in my tiered trays that I always put together for the holidays and I just feel really lucky to have been able to find these. So then while I was shopping around looking for a gift for a friend um, in a totally different section of the store that you never find Ray Dunn, I came across the Santa's Helper mug with a little Santa's cap on top of it. I almost think maybe somebody hid it back there to come back for it, which I feel, <laughs> I feel really bad about, but I was really happy to find this. I had not even seen this one online before, so I thought I was pretty lucky to come across it. And it was just $9.99. You know, the mugs were the regular price, $5.99, yeah, $5.99. So I thought this was a good price. I'm excited to, you know, decorate with it for the holidays. I think it's gonna be really cute, you know, for a drink station, cocoa station. I'll find a good spot for it, I promise. Over the past month or so, I was able to find some pieces that have been on my wish list forever. I practically gave up the hope of ever coming across them, and then there they are sitting on the shelf. I came across the Milk Carafe just recently at Marshall's, and they had about a dozen of them up on their shelf. I went ahead and bought two of them. I thought this would look really cute displayed with one of my cookie jars. And then also I wanted to put it out with a cocoa station or drink station around the holidays. I was able to find the syrup pitcher at TJ Maxx, which is a store that I really don't go in that often, but they had a ton of them there on their shelf. And I have this displayed in one of my glass cabinets here in the kitchen. But my favorite find most of all, and it was number one on my wish list, was the honey jar. We are definitely honey lovers in our house. We use it every day. So I was really thrilled to find this at Home Goods. But I have to be honest, this is one piece that will not be in circulation. I have it tucked safely behind glass here in my kitchen. So if you guys are collectors, you're going to have to tell me in the comment section down below what Ray Dunn pieces are on your wish list. Mine right now is that Marshmallow Cellar and the Jingle Bells Red Canister. So it's about two and a half hours later and I am going to turn my crock pot from high down to low and that's going to cook for about another hour, hour and a half. And over on the counter here I have my... Um, my dish all full of sweet potatoes, red potatoes, onions. I have some garlic in there, some rosemary, salt and pepper. So I'm gonna cover this with some foil and stick it in the oven and it'll roast for about 40 minutes or so. So this is our dinner all plated up with roasted potatoes and Italian green beans. If you guys are looking for something really different, easy and delicious for dinner, I hope you will give this a try. I will have all the recipe details in the information box down below. So thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you'll join me for all of my upcoming holiday prep videos. Don't forget to subscribe and until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other and I will see you again soon. Bye.